Plato was an Athenian philosopher during the classical period in ancient Greece. He was the founder of the Platonist school of thought. He was the student of Socrates, teacher of Aristotle, and founder of the Academy, best known as the author of philosophical works of unparalleled influence. Plato wrote many philosophical texts, at least 25. He dedicated his life to learning and teaching and is hailed as one of the founders of Western philosophy. Life and education. Plato was born in Athens in 428 BC and was died in 348 BC. His real name was Aristocles, which means the best glory. Plato belonged to an aristocratic and influential family. Ancient sources described him as a bright student who excelled in his studies. Plato learned grammar, music, and gymnastics by the most distinguished teachers of his time. Plato had attended philosophical classes of Socrates, which was a great source of his higher education. He was also familiar with Cratylus and the Heraclitian doctrines. Influences from others. Socrates deeply influenced Plato directly as related in the dialogues. His own most decisive philosophical influences are usually thought to have been along with Socrates, the pre Socratics Pythagoras, Heraclitus, and Parmenides. Aristotle claimed that the philosophy of Plato closely followed the teachings of the Pythagoreans, and Cicero repeats this claim they say Plato learned all things Pythagorean. According to R. M. Hare, this influence consists of three points. First, the Platonic Republic might be related to the idea of a tightly organized community of like minded thinkers, like the one established by Pythagoras and Croton. Second, the idea that mathematics and, generally speaking, abstract thinking is a secure basis for philosophical thinking as well as for substantial theses in science and morals. Third, they shared a mystical approach to the soul and its place in the material world. Plato never speaks in his own voice in his dialogues, and speaks as Socrates in all but the laws. In the second letter, it says, No writing of Plato exists or ever will exist, but those now said to be his are those of a Socrates become beautiful and new. Work, books, ideas, and contribution. Plato's most famous work is The Republic, which details a wise society run by a philosopher. He is also famous for his The Dialogues, which showcase his metaphysical theory of forms. Dialectic. Plato uses the term dialectic throughout his works to refer to whatever method he happens to be recommending as the vehicle of philosophy. The term, from dialegistai, meaning to converse or talk through, gives insight into his core conception of the project. Yet it is also evident that he stresses different aspects of the conversational method in different dialogues. Philosophy. Plato was the innovator of the written dialogue and dialectic forms in philosophy. His most famous contribution is The Theory of Forms, known by Pure Reason, in which Plato presents a solution to the problem of universals known as Platonism. Platonism and theory of forms or theory of ideas denies the reality of the material world, considering it only an image or copy of the real world. According to this theory of forms, there are at least two worlds. First is the apparent world of concrete objects, grasped by the senses, second was an unchanging and unseen world of forms or abstract objects, grasped by pure reason, which ground what is apparent. Plato's forms thus represent types of things, as well as properties, patterns, and relations, to which we refer as objects. Just as individual tables, chairs, and cars refer to objects in this world, tableness, chairness, and carness, as well as e, g, justice, truth, and beauty refer to objects in another world. One of Plato's most cited examples for the forms were the truths of geometry, such as the Pythagorean theorem. Politics Plato's most of political ideas derive from his books, The Dialogues, The Republic, The Laws, and The Statesman. In his Republic, societal structure was divided into three classes. First, workers, the laborers, these correspond to the appetite part of the soul. Second, warriors or guardians, those persons who are adventurous, strong, and brave, in the armed forces. These correspond to the spirit and courage. Third, rulers or philosopher kings, those who are intelligent, rational, self controlled, in love with wisdom, well suited to make decisions for the community. These correspond to the reason part of the soul and are very few. Plato's theory of education Plato regards education as a means to achieve justice, both individual justice and social justice. 
According to Plato, individual justice can be obtained when each individual develops his or her ability to the fullest. In this sense, justice means excellence. For the Greeks and Plato, excellence is virtue. According to Socrates, virtue is knowledge. Stages of education. According to Plato, there are different stages of proper education. First stage. Plato believed that education began from the age of seven, and before this, children should stay with their parents for moral education. It covers moral and ethical stories. Second stage. This stage comprises gymnastics, literature, music, elementary mathematics. Gymnastics is essential for the physical and mental growth. Music is chosen as the medium of education, an avenue for the spiritual growth. The third stage. This stage is meant for cadetship and is related to physical and military training. The youth are brought into the stage of battle in this age. The fourth stage. This stage is from 20 to 30, where advanced mathematics and their relation to reality are taught. Here, students undergo mathematical training. Plato has highlighted the qualities needed for an individual to enter higher education. The fifth stage. This stage is from 30 to 35. Plato restricted the study of dialectic to this age because he felt that an individual should be mature enough to carry on the study in dialectic, especially about ultimate principles of reality. The sixth stage. This age is from 35 to 50, when, according to Plato, an individual is ready as a philosopher or ruler to return to practical life to take command in war and hold such offices of state as befits him. After reaching 51, should spend the life in contemplation of the good. Their chief pursuit should be philosophy and should participate in politics and rule for the good of the people as a matter of their duty. Plato's communism. Plato's communism is of two forms, viz., the abolition of private property, which included house, land, money, etc., and the second, the end of family system. Through the abolition of these two, Plato attempted to create a new social order wherein the ruling class surrendered both family and private property and embraced a system of communism. This practice of communism is only meant for the ruling class and the guardian class. However, Plato did not bind this principle on the third class, the workers. They were allowed to maintain property and family, but were under strict supervision so that they do not become either too rich or too poor. Plato's influence and contribution. Plato is one of history's most influential philosophers. His contributions range across numerous philosophical subfields, including ethics, cosmology, and metaphysics. The so-called Neoplatonism of philosophers like Plotinus and Porphyry influenced Saint Augustine and thus Christianity. Alfred North Whitehead once noted, "The safest general characterization of the European philosophical tradition is that it consists of a series of footnotes to Plato." Criticism. Karl Popper argued that Plato's alleged proposal for a utopian political regime in the Republic was prototypically totalitarian. The Dutch historian of science Eduard Jan Dijksterhuis criticizes Plato, stating that he was guilty of constructing an imaginary nature by reasoning from preconceived principles and forcing reality more or less to adapt itself to this construction.